Hi, Sisrin here with another video and today we're going to talk about tips and tricks for Last Epoch and more about making the most of your time spent playing the game so that you can focus on having less busy work and more time on the stuff that you really enjoy. We're also going to give lots of tips for the Circle of Fortune and how to min-max that a little bit more. We're really sorry to the Merchant's Guild, but I haven't been playing that yet so I have no real tips for that. And this video is sponsored by 11 Hour Games. First, we'll start with the loot filter, and optimizing your loot filter is one of the best ways you can save time. Manually sifting through and looking at affixes on the drop items is a huge waste of time. The in-game loot filter is actually a really robust tool, it's very easy to use, and once you get good at it and have the right rules, it'll do pretty much all of the work for you when it comes to loot. Depending on the stage that your character is at gear-wise, you're going to want to completely filter out a lot of base types that aren't useful for your build, Early on, I will list like most of the bases I'm interested in while leveling, and then, you know, eventually I'll remove those when I'm only looking for those best in slot bases. Eventually, you'll hide like most non unique, non exalted items. Um, I'm pretty much only looking for exalted items for actual upgrades. You want to do these things pretty much as soon as you hit empowered monoliths. If you're looking for a specific affix shard for your build, something you maybe not have picked up enough of, you can put that at the top of your loot filter and that'll override any of the rules listed below. And a bonus tip, if you tick the short option in the length of item names drop down, it'll make your screen a lot less cluttered when it looks at drops. Also remembering to like update your filter as you're starting to get more insane gear, and especially once you reach this tier of the uh, Circle of Fortune Guild, you are going to get an insane amount more of exalted things, you will actually start having to hide exalted gear. Using a dump tab. So for those of you that play Path of Exile, you might already be familiar with the concept of a dump tab, but is it necessary in Last Epoch? The short answer is yes. The more time you spend actively playing the game will always be more efficient and, more importantly, more fun. There's no need to spend all of those precious clicks shattering items and placing your loot in the specific tabs after fixing an echo. Leaving those tasks for when you're not playing or wanting to relax and loot induced serotonin and increased break instead. So what is a dump tab? This will be the first stash that opens when you click your stash and you will dump all the loot in your inventory to organize later. So I usually do that like when I'm done with a session, I'm chilling, maybe watching a movie or listening to something or just not actively playing. Like I'm, I'm doing something that I don't need to be super focused on. So you do actually spend a lot less time and it might feel like it ends up taking longer, but I, I think most people, and uh, maybe we can get some veterans in the comments really um, speaking to how efficient a dump tab really can be, because it will save you a large amount of time. And there is no such thing as affinity system in Last Epoch. Hopefully that's something we'll get, but that obviously would alleviate the need for a dump tab a lot. Next up, we have the monolith and echo optimization. How do you actually progress your echoes and fill up timeline stability to spawn a boss faster? And how do you gain timeline corruption to get more rewards? Your goal in any given timeline is to progress as far from the starting island as possible. This increases the timeline stability and also makes progress towards finding a Shade of Orbis, which is a mini boss echo. Make sure to always kill the timeline boss before attempting a Shade of Orbis, as that gives you extra corruption from the Gaze of Orbis mechanic. Always rush the completion of Echo as uh, opposed to slaying every monster you see. This will ensure that your progress yields a lot more XP, more loot in general. Even for Echoes that require you to slay enemies to find the objective, you're better off exploring more of the map, as you'll also find caches and exiled mages, which will give you a lot more loot. The only exception to this, especially early on Hardcore, if you find a map that's very safe, clearing that can be really good. And honestly, if I find an Echo that just has an insane amount of pack size or the monsters are just dropping a large amount of tier 6s and tier 7 early on, I will probably finish that map because you will sometimes have a noticeable difference and then they are worth clearing. Another thing that's nice for knowing what to prioritize and what to farm is this uh, infographic made by Wine though on Reddit. It looks pretty correct. So you can see like the white text, for example, where it says helmets and shields. That means that the unique rewards for that monolith will be helmets and shields or you know belts for that timeline so very good to know what you're farming so i will actually be farming helmets and shields most of the time since i have so many helmets that i want high legendary potential on body armors can also be a good one but the nodes you prioritize will depend on what you're currently hunting and which timeline you've chosen to run for its uh, exclusive rewards However, I suggest also running Tomes of Experience reward echoes when you encounter them. The reason for that is they will actually give you a lot of favor and a lot of XP for your character. Avoid set items, key rewards, and gold rewards. They are awful. They are absolutely not worth it. 
and the arena echo uh, challenges when we actually have to fight different waves are very very slow and not super rewarding so if it says arena anywhere in the name of the little island that's how you can tell if it's an arena echo Gaining more corruption for your echoes is always better if your build can handle it. This obviously has very heavy drawbacks on hardcore, but otherwise it's always more better to run the highest corruption you can, as it gives more rewards in the form of more exalted items, more unique items. I'm pretty sure it also gives a higher chance of getting legendary potential on your items, seeing as as soon as I started doing 2-300 corruption, I always feel like I'm fighting more legendary potential, but I wouldn't swear by that. Now, for progressing your chosen faction, it's no secret that the higher rank you unlock, the more powerful features that you get. So we're going to be covering Circle of Fortune because that's what we have the most experience with. Make sure to always have prophecies relevant to your current chase. As an example, if you're looking for a new relic, target the exalted relic prophecies and always work towards completing your current ones and grabbing new ones when done. When it comes to lenses for your observatory telescopes, I suggest blocking out arena entirely as soon as possible followed by a regional lens to aid in finding your specific type of relics. And when you grab rank 9, you can grab the lens of wealth to double the reward for a little under double the favor cost. This will save you favor in the long run because you will be rerolling a few times, but you will be getting a lot more reward. Also, blocking out dungeons is really good as well. I don't really want to be in dungeons. I don't really want to spend time being there at all. There might be other optimized setups that work as well. For endgame crafting, your character will eventually reach a point where you want at least one exalted affix relevant for your build on each base, base item, with all the other affixes being tier 5. And maybe sometimes you'll be able to get a sealed item as well. The base type is very important in Last Epoch, as it can mean the difference between 32 armor or armor and 40% resist and crit multi. But how do you increase the chances of successfully forging the item you spent your precious time grinding for? One big tip is to seal one tier 3 and below to help the affix clearing off the affix slots and increases your chance of hitting the rune of removal. I also recommend sealing an affix that is useful for your build but not one of your main stat priorities. So something like resists or something that doesn't have a huge upgrade at tier 4 or 5. You can stock up Cliff of Despair very easily by using idle prophecies. So trying to hunt those down is surprisingly cheap. As an example, this prophecy will grant me 36 Cliff of Despair for 4,500 favor. And this is using the double cost and reward lens. Using a Glyph of Chaos early on can be okay to hit a unwanted affix, but it is very RNG. Using a Rune of Removal as well can be quite good because I've had a lot of luck where I've just removed a stat I didn't want, being left with only the ones I wanted and enough forging potential to finish the item. Rune of Chaos can be very scary because you might end up using it three or four times and never hitting what you want and just breaking the item. Always when you can, try to use Glyph of Hope, as generally you want to preserve as much forging potential as you can. When it comes to making your character tankier, prioritize effective health in forms of health or ward or both, and passive defenses like crit avoidance, armor, dodge, over resistances. Resistances are not as important in this game as they might seem, as they mitigate less damage than they appear. On top of that, monsters in this game penetrate more resistances based on this level, which is very different from, for example, Path of Exile. For example, if you have 75% fire resist against a level 100 monster, they will instantly penetrate all your resistances by default. So you basically have zero fire resist. However, if you only had 50, you would have negative 25, which means they would take 25 more damage. However, this is a very big difference from Path of Exile, where going from 75 to 76% resist is 4% less damage instead of 1% less damage. So there is a very big difference. That being said, I do recommend that you have physical resist capped early and then you do void after that. Then it's kind of whatever. Poison and necro is not bad, but the elemental ones are like the least important. Physical will make a pretty big difference. Disable your base loot filter when hunting for legendary crafting fodder. Item bases are not relevant when you want to smash an exalted item into your legendary potential uniques. So it's a good idea to just make a roll that shows all the base items for that specific item when you're hunting for legendary fodder. In closing, we hope these tips bring you a lot more fun, a lot more efficiency playing Last Epoch. And remember, there's no wrong way to play a game. If you're having fun, you're doing it the right way. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sub if you liked the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.